guys, I wanted to give you a button update really quick. So just in case you're new here and you found us from the buttons. Water. I'm Jen and this is my learner, Fairby, and she wants water. We'll be right back. And this is a perfect time to tell you, if she says water, it means she wants water in a mug. She has water available all the time, but water specifically means mug water. So if you found us from searching for Fluent Pet Buttons, Welcome. Farabee is a two and a half year old standard poodle. We have had buttons since April of 2020 and we actually got serious around March of 2021. So between April of 2020 and March of 2021, we only had eight buttons. In March of 2021, I kind of discovered, you know, that a lot of these dogs were learning and communicating and developing their own sentences, we'll say. I was a little bit intrigued and I decided to do that. Am I in your way? I'm sorry. So like I was trying to say, um, we actually got started with buttons and I had full sentences on them, which was all I really thought I wanted to do. I kind of got on board with getting a set of buttons. Like we had eight and then I got eight more and I realized that she was actually putting together sentences pretty good and asking for things that, you know, I didn't necessarily have on one single button. So it's grown from there. Um, we currently have 40 buttons. So we've added 32 buttons since March. It's December, by the way. So we're going along pretty good. Currently, we are learning things like nighttime, sunny, uh, rain. Those are things we're learning right now. What else are we learning? Oh, we have happy. You're happy. Look at you. So this is a really good time to model happy because you see the smile that she has on her face right now? That means she's happy. Happy therapy. Happy therapy, yeah, you're happy. So we're learning about emotions right now as well. So happy is pretty easy to communicate and to show because you just wait for that wagon tail and that open mouth smile and then you just tell them how they're happy. You feel happy, yeah. And then they start telling you, therapy frequently now runs over and tells me she's happy, which is really cute. Um, but you want to make sure you're actually telling them whenever they feel the emotion rather than just, you know, telling them to say happy. And the same thing with frustrated. So frustrated, oops, we throw, I'm sorry. So frustrated is pretty easy too because whenever, you know, you see them barking or you know that there's something they want they can't get, like maybe there's a squirrel outside. Puzzle all done for now. Puzzle all done. Puzzle. All done. We puzzle tomorrow. So that's another thing we model is all done. So we've done puzzle three times today and we are done with puzzle. <laughs> we do not need another puzzle. It is eight o'clock at night. So if she wants food, there's food in her bowl. We don't need a puzzle right now. So I have people ask me a lot of times, like, what do you wish you would have done different? And I'll tell you the main thing I wish I would have done different is get whatever buttons I was gonna use from the beginning. And number one, Fluent Pet wasn't a button company that I knew of whenever I did order learning resources buttons. So I didn't really see any other choices. And I don't think they actually became like a public company where you could buy from them until after we already had buttons. Fairby is a guide for Fluent Pet. So we do have an affiliate link for you guys if you're interested. I will link that below for you guys. Um, we do get a commission from purchases made with our link and we really appreciate it. I am actually a disabled woman and I can only work part time and I'm a single mom to therapy. So anytime you use our link, that really helps. And I did a whole entire comparison video before we were affiliates. So I will link that for you guys if you're interested in checking it out. I made some notes because I feel like there's some kind of frequently asked questions. So the first thing, keep in mind your dog is learning a second language. So even though we communicate with them in our human language, it's still a second language for them to communicate with. Let's say you're an English speaker and you can understand some Spanish. But if you have to come up with it off the top of your head, it kind of is slow sometimes, um, if you're not fluent in it, of course. You know, sometimes you might be having to actually think what word means what and translate in your head before you actually speak it. And it's kind of the same with dogs or cats or any animal learning to use buttons to speak. Something I really noticed with Farabee is number one, she will have long pauses between her words sometimes. And the other thing, she will actually say things not quite in order. So a good example of that is she says, walk, go. Where in English, we would say, go walk. It's also common for animals to have a delay. So whenever you ask them a question or they are 
uh, thinking through a sentence, a lot of times they'll press like two or three buttons or maybe one button and then there'll be a long pause, like maybe 40 seconds even. A lot of times if you'll just hang tight for a second, they will finish their thought. So another important thing to keep in mind is sometimes your learner is not gonna use the buttons for every single request. They already have a way to communicate with you like body language and you know, like you can just kind of tell their subtle cues that they have, then they might not let's say use the button to say they need to go outside every single time. They might just do their body language and they might use the button, you know, 50% of the time. Um, and that's okay. But that is pretty common and you can't expect for them to completely unlearn what they've learned through their whole entire life and just start communicating with you on a board. So I have found that the buttons that Fairby uses the very most are things that she wouldn't have a way to really show me in body language. So a minute ago, she used the water button and she always has fresh water in a bowl available, like always, and it's the same water that goes in the mug. But sometimes she wants a mug of water, fresh water out of the fridge that's cold. And you know, of course her bowl of water gets to be room temperature throughout the day. So I'm sure it's just like, maybe we want cold water instead of room temperature water. You know what I mean? Like, so even though it's the same, it's still different. She does use that and that is what that button means. It always means mug water. Or right, that's a good example. The other thing she asks for things like scratches. So sometimes she wants to have scratches versus just pets or snuggles. And I think that's really cool that she can specifically ask for that. Because if your dog comes up to you, you might just think, oh cool, you wanna cuddle. Well, sometimes she wants to be scratched and she's like, just, you know, just scratch me, I need a scratch and that's it. Like go on your merry way, woman. We have a look at me button. Sometimes she'll say, look at me. And she really just wants to have a little bit of eye contact for a second. Um, we also have different outdoor location buttons. So we have porch, we have outside, we have walk. So she can specifically ask for where she wants to be. And I think that's pretty neat too, because otherwise I would just assume every time she wanted to go outside, it meant to go for a walk, you know? And a lot of times she really wants to go relax on the porch. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, we have added the sunny button and we've added rain. So sometimes she will actually tell me sunny porch. So she wants to go relax on the porch, it's sunny. So it's really important to model things for your learner. So you would just press whatever you're trying to tell them they're doing or tell them that you are doing and just show them. So a good time to do this is whenever you go outside, you would say, you know, we go outside or go outside or potty outside or whatever on the buttons and obviously verbally communicate that to them as well. Um, and don't ever force them. Don't ever like take them and make them press it. And also don't withhold stuff. So if you know they need to go to the bathroom, don't withhold things and make them say it on the buttons first. If you can tell they want to play, then maybe say like, play, play. now. Now. And then play now. Ready? Go play now. That's a good way to do that. And then just every time you do something that you want them to learn, then model it for them. And then eventually they will pick it up and ask for it on the buttons. So we've really enjoyed learning with the Flint Pet buttons and just learning with buttons in general. Um, like I said, we did not start with Flint Pet. We started out with the big learning resources buttons and I just prefer the Flint Pet buttons more. I did a comparison video. Like I said, I'll link it for you guys if you're interested. So like I mentioned, Fairby is a guide for Fluent Pet. So we do have an affiliate link. And if you guys have found this video helpful and you are gonna order from Fluent Pet, we would really appreciate if you do use our link. We do get a kickback from it. Um, so it doesn't cost you anything additional to use it though. If you have any questions about the buttons, um, even if you're not using Fluent Pet, if you're just on a button journey and learning to communicate this way with your animal, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have if I can't answer them. If I can't answer them, then of course, I probably know somebody who would have some good insight for you. So anyways, I hope this was helpful for you and I hope that you know you found the information that you're looking for and this has inspired you to start a button journey with your pet. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in this type of content, we do typically post shorts of her talking a lot. Um, we are, a service dog team. So Fairby is my service dog. I'm a disabled person. So a lot of our content is vlog style. We'd love to have you on the channel. I just wanted to be really clear and transparent about that so that you're not only expecting um, button content <laughs> because it does pretty much come up in every video because Fairby's talking some, but it's kind of mixed in with, you know, other content as well. So we really appreciate you being here. 
Thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who are watching Vlogmas, we will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.